What's the story everyone, welcome back to Gaelic Games Fan TV, how are we all getting on, how is the form? So here we go then, the 2024 National Football League predictions, it's always one of the most fun videos I make every year, it's always one of the videos I enjoy the most, it's the one video where we can talk about every county, we can predict every county and ultimately we can look back at these predictions in a couple of months time and just completely be like... <laughs> But nonetheless, here we go. I mean, the inter-county football season, I mean, properly, I know we've had pre-season and everything else, but the National Football League starts. Here we go. The National Football League is here, and I'm absolutely buzzing for it, excited for it, really looking forward to going to a lot of the games. Yeah, like, for those of you who have subscribed and have been here a while, you'll know the drill, and you'll know very much how this video works. What we're going to do is we're going to be predicting where every team is going to place in the National Football League across all four divisions, previewing every team, discussing what players we should look out for, and ultimately predicting who's going to get promoted, who's going to get relegated, and who is going to win the 2024 National Football League. Now, in previous videos, I've, funnily enough, my Football League predictions last year actually weren't that bad. It was mainly just my all Ireland predictions. I mean, yeah, predicting Mayo and Toronto... Get to the all Ireland final, I think, is certainly something I'm not going to uh, get rid of anytime soon. Stop it. Get some help. But yeah, we're going to predict the entirety of the National Football League. And this year, we're actually going to take it to another level. So usually what we always do is we predict where every team places, we predict who gets promoted, and we predict who gets relegated. This year, I've took it to the extreme because not only are we, are we predicting where every team is going to place in the National Football League, we're also going to predict every game. <laughs> so when I'm predicting what team finishes in a specific position, I'll tell you where I think they're going to be getting points from, from their fixtures. Now, the reason why I've done this is because in previous years, like not necessarily that I've neglected the fixture list or, or anything like that, but I think where a lot of my predictions have gone wrong in the National Football League down the years is maybe I haven't looked into the fixture list because I do think the fixtures in the National Football League are of, are of huge importance. I mean... For example, you think back to last year when Antrim beat Cavan in Division 3 on the final day. Cavan are already promoted. Antrim were in a relegation battle. That game happens on any other game week. Antrim probably don't beat Cavan. I think the same applies in, in multiple other divisions where some teams have promotion wrapped up. You've got other teams who've already relegated or are in a relegation battle that need the wins. And I think sometimes the timing of playing certain teams is of huge importance. Like, for example, I think Donegal are going to start Division 2 like an absolute house on fire. But I think towards the end of Division 2, they'll probably start taking their eye off the ball and start putting their focus towards the championship. Ultimately meaning that you're probably more likely to beat Donegal towards the end of Division 2 than you are at the start of Division 2. And that's why I do think the fixtures are of high importance. And that's why ultimately I've decided to predict every game and every fixture in the National Football League, as well as obviously where the teams place. I mean, where the teams finish is basically based off that fixture list because of obviously we're adding up how many points each team gets. Another disclaimer before like diving into it, like these are my predictions, so do bear that in mind. And to be honest with you, usually like I wouldn't take any of these predictions to heart because as I said before, if I predict your team to get relegated, they're probably going to get promoted. And if I predict your team to get promoted, they're probably going to get relegated. Do you know what I mean? There's been certain teams down the years I've predicted to get relegated every year and they go on to have brilliant years. There's some teams I predict to go on and have brilliant years and then they go on to have absolutely terrible years. Now don't get me wrong, some predictions down the years I've got right very little let's start off with division four make our way upwards let's go in eight i've got i've gone for waterford and i'm predicting them to actually finish with zero points and losing every game they're the only team that i've predicted to lose every game and they're the only team i've predicted to not win a game in the entirety of the national football league look i don't want to be too disrespectful to waterford and if there are any waterford football fans watching this video like waterford have just been around this level for the last couple of years and obviously got a new manager in charge now as well. Like, I just... I, I'm not too sure about Waterford. Like, there's no underage coming through. There's no real players coming through. Like, 
you are a predominantly hurling county and I don't think Waterford football like it's just one of them things like I don't really know really what else to say if we look at your fixture list we'll throw it up on screen Leitrim home Carlow away Longford home Wexford away Tipperary away London away and Leash at home and I think you're going to lose all of those games unfortunately Dara Corcoran has been your your top scorer for the last couple of seasons and I think as long as he hasn't opted out or anything I think he will be a key player as well in seventh I've got London and I'm actually giving them five points sometimes when I'm making these predictions I don't think there's really much between a lot of teams and actually between 7th and 2nd in Division 4 I've only got 4 points in the difference so like I actually don't think London will be a million miles off challenging for promotion and it's actually going to be more so towards the end of the league where I think they're going to tail off a little bit looking at their fixtures so Wexford at home first up I think they're going to win that uh, we'll discuss Wexford uh, a little bit later and their reason and my reasoning for thinking of that defeat from a Wexford point of view Leitrim away I think that's going to be a defeat they're going to draw with Tipperary at home they'll lose away to Longford they'll lose away to Leash they'll beat Waterford at home and then they'll lose to Carlo but yeah like I think London are a bit of a dangerous outfit and a bit of an unknown quantity like the fact that Michael Maher is sticking around again tells me that he obviously fancies something in this London side we remember two years ago in Division 4 they caused a couple of surprises and a couple of scalps and I think they're going to be a tricky team they're going to be a tricky team to play Shea Rafter has obviously come in um, and looks a very very good player in fairness obviously scored six points in that win versus Mayo in pre-season a better version of Liam Gallagher shall we say they have uh, in and around midfield he's a very good player in fairness Liam Gavahan has called a day he has uh, retired from London so he won't be playing this year I have them in seventh so you'll probably think I think they're going to be a million miles off promotion. But again, if they can sneak like another win somewhere along the way here, like maybe if they get over the line against against Tipperary, maybe if they can get something on the final day versus Carlo, again, promotion, like it's not a million miles away for London. In sixth, I've gone for Carlo, and I have them with six points. I think they'll lose to Tipperary, they'll beat Waterford, they'll lose to Leash, they'll draw with Leitrim at home, they'll lose to Wexford. They'll draw with Longford and then they will beat London on the final day. What's interesting is Carlo will be in seventh position going into that final day and then they'll beat London and essentially leapfrog them in the table. Uh, Carlo again, like again, they're a bit of an unknown quantity. Like obviously Paul Carew sticking around for another year. He's been in charge of Carlo for quite a number of years now he's probably one of the most long-serving managers in division four at this stage like they have a some great players carlo who can do the business like at this level like dara foley's decent ross dunphy looks a player kevin murphy was very good uh, in a couple of pre-season games and colm hulton who uh, played you know played for ballymun kickums and played minor football actually with dublin um but obviously now plays for for carlo under the same management more or less the same squad are we going to see anything too different from previous years? I don't think so. Ultimately, I think Carlo will have a few moments here and there in Division 4, but I do think they'll miss out on promotion and finish in 6th. In 5th, they've gone for Tipperary. Now, a lot of people might be surprised by this, given the fact that Tipperary were relegated from Division 3 last season. And, of course, I think a lot of people remember, and maybe even Tipperary fans are fed up of people actually mentioning this now at this stage, Obviously, that Munster Championship win back in 2020. I mean, to be fair, you wouldn't get fed up with that, would you? But it's just something everybody remembers Tipperary Boy at this stage. And anytime we mention Tipperary football, you kind of have to mention that Munster Championship success. But look, ultimately, it's a completely different team now. Different management, completely different set of players. And, you know, I think Tipperary like have probably gone back to where they were ultimately before they had a huge burst of underage success sort of in the mid 2010s and obviously that translated them into getting to two all Ireland semi-finals in a couple of years and one Munster title success. Paul Kelly will be the new manager of Tipperary. I'm very curious to actually see how Paul Kelly gets on at Tipperary because uh, he is a talent native. He did a very good job actually with Thomas Davis when he was in charge. He actually got them to a, a Dublin senior football championship final. In terms of personnel like there's been a lot of players up to now. Players are tiring like Connor Sweeney obviously suffered a massive ACL injury at the start of the league last year so like will we see him back at the early stages of the league probably not maybe so at the end of the league they will have Sean O'Connor back though and do watch out for him because I think he'll have a great year for Tipperary but Carlo up first at home I think they'll win that I think they'll lose to Waterford I think they'll draw with London they'll lose to Leash they'll beat Waterford they'll beat Wexford and unfortunately they'll lose to Leitrim on the final day which will ultimately be 
what cost them promotion. In fourth, I've gone for Wexford. You might have been looking at some of these results that I've predicted already and been thinking, how do you have Wexford in fourth even though you're predicting them to lose to London? And the main reason being is Wexford are probably one of the most unpredictable teams in Division 4 that you can predict. Like, they have all the... They have the quality to get out of this division, but for whatever reason down the years, they just never seem to be able to put a run of results together. They, it seems when they get to the Talchin Cup or the early parts of the Leinster Championship, they'll pull a result out of their arse out of nowhere and beat like an Offaly or a Fermanagh or something like that. And looking at their fixture list, I think they'll lose the opening game to London, they'll lose to Leash, they'll beat Leitrim, they'll beat Waterford, they'll then beat Carlo, so a run of three wins on the, on the spin there. They'll lose to Tipperary, but then they will beat... Longford so finish with eight points so again they're going to be very very close to promotion the reason why they will miss out is inconsistency you know the opening day against London away from home London in good form Wexford notoriously slow starters in the National Football League it screams of a London win in my opinion and genuinely I would be so confident London would beat them in that game in terms of personnel like they do have a lot of good players I mean Ben Brosnan is somehow still going which I mean his longevity is absolutely insane he must be nearly one of the longest serving inter-county footballers at this stage you've got Mark Rossiter Owen Nolan I think is a good player Paul Accuse I've been impressed with during pre-season as well he scored one, a goal and two points versus Kildare at wing back second year for John Hegarty you would hope that maybe he can build a bit of consistency within this Wexford team I just think they won't be able to get over the line again and like don't get me wrong if Wexford got promoted I wouldn't be surprised but if Wexford finished 6th or 7th, again, I wouldn't be surprised. They're just, they're a very inconsistent team, to be honest with you. And then we move into the promotion battle, and we have the three L's, Longford, Leash, and Leitrim, all to discuss right here, right now. Very, very, uh, I mean, look, I think Leash will be good enough to get promoted, but between Longford and Leitrim, it's going to be, it's very, very hard to predict, and I'm going to be honest, I've changed my mind a couple of times on this one, and especially, obviously, predicting the fixtures as well. Like, when I changed my mind, I didn't have to go back and, like, re-predict uh, a fixture, which can kind of mess up the table. So, yeah, bear with me with this one in case I manage to get something wrong somewhere along the way. But ultimately, between Longford and Leitrim, going to go for Leitrim to get promoted, and... We'll discuss Longford first of all. I have them in third with eight points. So looking at their fixture list, they play Leash away. I think they'll lose that. I think they'll beat Tipperary. They'll beat Waterford. They'll beat London. They'll draw with Leitrim. They'll draw with Carlow before a defeat to Wexford. So only two defeats in there for Longford. And I think they're going to be very, very close to promotion in fairness. Actually, now that I look at this uh, table, obviously with the fact that there's a head-to-head -head record, uh, Wexford would actually jump up to third and Longford would jump down to fourth, so I'll correct that in the uh, in the table. But ultimately, same thing applies. I think Longford will miss out on promotion. They're going to be there thereabouts. Like they're going to have a good season in Division Four, and they've got a lot of good players in there who can cause a lot of damage at this level. I mean, Jason Matthews, Joseph Hagen have both looked very good in preseason. Darren Gallagher's back in the team now, and I think he's been one of the most consistent players for Longford for a number of years whether he plays in midfield or in the half forward line and it is Paddy Christie's second season and there is a element of pressure on Longford and Paddy Christie maybe not as much pressure as what's on Andy Moran with Leitrim ultimately the reason why I think I'd go with Leitrim over Longford is because there's still a lot of unknowns a little bit about Longford in my opinion will Paddy Christie be able to get a kick out of Longford it's hard to know they've looked very good in pre-season in the O'Byrne Cup yet again I mean they've gotten to the final of the O'Byrne Cup for a second year in a row I mean I don't know what it is about the O'Byrne Cup that makes Longford turn it on and play their best football we'll go at Leitrim in second with 10 points and when we run through their fixtures so Waterford away I think they'll win London at home I think they'll win Wexford at home will be a defeat they'll draw with Carlo they'll draw with Longford and then two vital wins towards the end of the season versus Leash and Tipperary it is a it's a tough one and one of the reasons why I went against Leitrim originally in terms of the promotion race was their fixture list is actually quite tough when you look at it like the first two games you would expect them to win Wexford at home is a, is a massive game. I've predicted them to lose it, um, but I do think that's such a huge, important game. Like, going away to Longford, Leash, and Carlo, three away games in a row, like, I was looking on the GEA. I had to double-check that on the GEA.ie website, and it was correct. It's a bit of a mad scenario to have three away games but it, in a row, but it does seem to have happened this season for some reason. Like, ultimately, last season, I didn't think they were... Like, they missed out on Division 4. They got beaten by New York 
everyone was going crazy at them on, on Twitter and social media, laughing at Andy Moore and Leitrim lads were getting abuse. And I just thought it was completely unprofound. Like, I thought ultimately Leitrim, very young team, a lot of young players, few experience and heads in there, like the likes of Keith Byrne, for example. But I do think New York are, you know, are a good side. They've got good players. But I think the key factor that swung it in terms of me going for Leitrim, in terms of them getting promoted, is Mickey Graham. Mickey Graham coming in as an assistant to Andy Morn is exactly what Andy Morn and Leitrim need because they need someone who has, you know, an experienced head, an experienced manager, someone who's going to be able to guide Andy Morn in the right direction. In terms of players, we know some of the, the talented players they have, Keith Byrne, Tom Pryor, Dara Roach, Dara Rooney scored six points versus Galway in preseason, and I think he could be a very good player. Barry McNulty looks a, a very good talent as well. So I'm going to go with Leitrim to just about edge it. 10 points on the board, uh, ultimately that draw versus Longford uh, away from home, I think is what will get them over the line. And then in the first position, we have Leash, and we have Leash finishing with 12 points. I think they're going to start very strong uh, home game, first up against Longford, I think they'll win. Wexford away, I think they'll win. Carlow at home, I think they'll win. Tipperary away, I think they'll win. London at home, I think they'll win. I think they'll lose at home to Leitrim. And then I think they'll beat Waterford on the uh, on the final day. So six wins out of seven games, ultimately a near perfect season. I do think Leash's promotion race will ultimately be wrapped up by the time they play Leitrim. So again, I think that plays a part in Leitrim winning that game, with Leitrim obviously needing the win to keep themselves alive in the promotion hunt. I think Leash have, as I said, a, a lot of very good players from Mark Barry, Regan Murphy. Will the Kingston brothers commit? I haven't heard otherwise. It looks like Paul Kingston's going to be in there. Evan O'Carroll, I think, has been a, a mainstay for Leash for a couple of years now. Very good footballer. Colin Murphy, I was very impressed with last year as well. And I think with Leash, like, they showed for me at times last year they're good enough to be a Division 3 team at the bare minimum. Like, they got to the semi finals of the Talchin Cup last year. I know they conceded eight goals against Down, and that was. Yeah, one of the most bizarre games of football I think I've ever seen, to be honest. But I do think, like, Justin McNulty coming in as manager, a man who managed Leash before, knows the county inside and out, got them to an all Ireland quarterfinal many, many years ago. Like, and fair enough, that was a different Leash team. And I think, you know, the idea of Leash getting to an all Ireland quarterfinal anytime soon is very unlikely. But I do think Justin McNulty is the right man for Leash, in my opinion. I do think Leash will get promoted, and I think there'll be a you know, a bit of a dark horse maybe for the Talchin Cup as well. In terms of what team I predict will go up as champions, I'm going to go for Leash. I think Leitrim being promoted, I think that will ultimately be their job done. Um, and not that they'll switch off in time for Connacht and, and, and the Talchin Cup, but I just fancy Leash to be the better side playing in Crow Park. So looking at Division 4 as a whole, as you will see on the screen right there. So Watford at the bottom with 0 points. London in 7th with 5 points. Carlow in 6th with 6 points. Tipperary in 5th with 7 points. Wexford in 4th with 8 points. Longford are 3rd uh, with... Uh, well, actually, Wexford are 3rd, apologies, with 8 points. Uh, but Longford uh, dropped down to 4th, obviously, with that late change that I made. Leitrim uh, have 10 points and Leash have, uh, have 12 points. So actually five points separate London and 7th and Leitrim. Look, ultimately when I'm predicting some of these results, like especially in the future, there is an element of guessing ever so slightly. Like, you know, it's this is just a bit of content and a video and everything else. So don't take it too seriously. But yeah, these this is my prediction for Division 4. Let me know what's yours in the comments down below. Let's move on to Division 3 then. And first up, we have the relegation battle down near the bottom of Division 3. And in at 8, I have Antrim with 3 points. Um, I know some Antrim fans mightn't be uh, too happy with this one. So looking at Antrim's fixture list, first of all. So Limerick away, I think is going to be a defeat. Offaly at home will be a loss. Down at home, I actually think they'll win that. Uh, Sligo away will be a loss. Westmead at home, uh, I think, will be a defeat. Clare away will be a draw, and then Wicklow at home will be a loss. So the only points I think Antrim will pick up in Division 3 will be against Down and Clare. The reason why I think they'll beat Down is because of the fact that it's a local derby uh, and everything else. And like, and I do think the league like throws up some mad results every now and again, which is why, with these predictions, I've thrown up a few like mad results every now and again, just because... That usually is what happens in the National League. Like, nothing always goes according to plan, to be fair. Look, it is Andy McEntee's second year. It's a tough one, really, because when you looked at them in the league last year, like, they only won one game, and that was obviously against Cavan. Like, 
they weren't particularly great and I think they were probably a little bit fortunate with the fact that Tipperary and Longford had very poor seasons by their own regards. Dominic McInhill looks a very good player. Mark Jordan I've been impressed with as well. From a neutral perspective, I don't see a lot coming through there. And I see the rest of it, of Division 3 being too strong. In 7th, I've got Wicklow with 5 points. I think they'll lose to Down, they'll lose to Sligo, they'll lose to Westmead and they'll lose to Clare. So a very slow start for Wicklow. But I think they'll turn it around towards the end of the league. A draw versus Offaly, a win versus Limerick, and a win versus Antrim. But ultimately, unfortunately for Wicklow, it will still see them relegated. Second year, of course, for Oshin McConville. Um, was very impressed with them in Division 4 last season. They've had a lot of younger players who've come into the fold in the last couple of years. Kevin Quinn, Owen Darcy... Uh, Brian Nesbitt looks a very good player of fullback as well. Looking at Wicklow in pre-season, they set up like you would expect an Ushie McConville team to set up. You've got the wing backs bursting forward, you've got your full backs joining the attack. Yeah, look, I think I've got them finishing with five points. So look, ultimately I don't think they're gonna be a million miles off staying up in this division. And look, if Wicklow can nick another result here or there, who knows where where they could go. I just think ultimately, again, a bit like what we spoke about with Antrim. I think the quality of this division will just be a bit too strong. And I think for Wicklow, they do have a lot of younger players who come in in the last couple of years. And I think maybe a push in Division 3 might be a bit too soon. In sixth, I've gone for Limerick with six points. Some people might be surprised by this considering Limerick were relegated from Division 2 last year. Um, but again, I... I think the I don't think the gap between like the bottom of Division Two and Division Three is that high in my opinion, um, and I think there are some there certainly are some question marks over Limerick that we're gonna need answering. Um, but ultimately, I do think they'll still stay in the division. Looking at their fixture list here, I think they'll beat Antrim on the opening day. What a, a big win that will be from a Limerick perspective. They'll lose to Down. They will beat Sligo. They'll lose to Westmead. They'll lose to Clare. They'll lose to Wicklow. But the win versus Offaly away from home on the final day. It's, yeah, look, they've, they've appointed Jimmy Lee as their new manager. He was obviously part of the old Limerick setup um, in terms of obviously Billy Lee, who was the manager there. You've got James Nocton, Ian Corbett, maybe Josh Ryan could return. Question mark maybe, could Danny Neville come back into the fold? There's question marks over Limerick. Look, Billy Lee done a very, very good job at Limerick. And I think for Jimmy Lee, like... You know, I think he could do something similar with Limerick, but I think it's going to maybe take a year or so before we start to see Limerick kick on. So I think ultimately the main aim for Limerick will be stay in the stay in the division. You know, in terms of if you do end up in a relegation battle, and then maybe a year after that, look to kick on, look to progress in the Talchin Cup. So yeah, I've got Limerick in sixth. I've also got Clare with six points, but I have them in fifth, and I do think they'll beat Limerick if we look at their fixture list, which is ultimately why I think they will finish above. Uh, Limerick so I think they'll draw with Sligo in the opening day they'll lose to Westmead they'll lose to Offaly they'll beat Wicklow and Limerick back to back before a draw with Antrim and then they will lose to Down on the final day some people might be surprised by this prediction again um, considering Clare were you know only you know Clare were nearly getting out of the you know they were always looking like they were going to get promoted from Division 2 a couple of years ago and now I think they're going to be there thereabouts in a relegation battle in Division 3 having been relegated from Division 2 last season but the, the main reason why I think Clare could be in a spot of bother this year and look ultimately I have them predicted I have them in fifth it could be a lot worse when you actually look through the amount of players that they're going to lose this year. So obviously Colm Collins is gone. Mark Fitzgerald has come in uh, as new manager. Coincidentally, he was the man who was in charge of Limerick last year after Ray Dempsey left his position as, uh, as Limerick manager. So a little bit of an interesting uh, uh, plot twist there um, in terms of you know the Limerick and Clare rivalry and everything else. But in terms of the players who will be gone for Clare... Owen Cleary, Keelan Sexton, Jamie Malone, Keen O'D, Pierce Lillis and Gavin Cooney have all left the Clare setup. I believe all those lads are going travelling. And then in terms of retirements, you've got Cahill O'Connor, Podge Collins, Darren O'Neill and Kieran Russell all retiring. Like you're talking about, like that's eight, nine, maybe ten starters right there that Clare are going to lose as well as their manager. Like that is a huge turnover of players. Now Clare is a very well run county in terms of football in my opinion and they've been able to just introduce the odd couple of young players here and there and I think they've obviously got a very good setup in terms of underage structures and everything else which is why I think they'll find one or two more players this year that will keep them up in the division. 
I would look at Clare though and think like they could be on the slide ever so slightly. It wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised if they did get relegated. The likes of Aaron Griffins look good in pre-season. Darren McCoughlin and Kieran Downs have looked all right. So yeah, Clare. There's a question mark over Clare. Make no question about that. But I think they'll do enough and I think they'll finish in fifth. We then move into the promotion chase and in fourth I've gone for Offaly with seven points. Uh, I think Offaly will start the year very strong uh, under new manager Declan Kelly. I think they'll beat Westmead, they'll beat Antrim and they'll beat Clare before a defeat to Down. They'll then draw with Wicklow and then they'll lose to both Sligo and Limerick in the final two games. I predicted them to start the league very strong but ultimately tail off uh, towards the end ever so slightly and again I think they have a young team um, obviously a bulk of those under 20 lads have you know come into the come into their team now. Declan Kelly of course was the manager who won Offaly the under 20 all Ireland a couple of years ago and no doubt he's going to be introducing a good bulk of those players even more so you know Cormac Egan for example has played quite a role throughout pre-season you've still got experienced heads in there Keen Farrell Rory McNamee Dylan Hyland's in there as well I just think ultimately for Offaly there's going to be inconsistencies in their season because ultimately they are a very young team and I don't think they're the finished article just yet and look I think Offaly certainly moving in the right direction Declan Kelly certainly needs a couple of years to to build Offaly into what I think they can be I do think Offaly are not a million miles off becoming a division two team I just think this year is going to be a little bit too soon in third I've gone for Sligo and uh, again a lot of people could be surprised by this one considering Sligo have come up from uh, division four ultimately I do have Sligo finishing on seven points as well, which is the same amount of points as Offaly. But I do fancy Sligo to upset Offaly and actually win that game. And ultimately, that's why I think Sligo will finish above Offaly. Looking at Sligo's fixtures, I think they'll draw with Clare on the opening day. They'll beat Wicklow. They'll lose to Limerick. They'll beat Antrim. They'll lose to Down. They'll beat Offaly. And then they'll lose to Westmead. So a very topsy-turvy season from a, from a Sligo perspective. I don't think they'll put any back-to-back wins together. And look, I mean, you do look at those opening four games, especially with Clare being in disarray and having so many players missing. Like, Clare, Wicklow, Limerick and Antrim in your opening four games. Like, Sligo, in my opinion, are more than capable of winning those games. And, like, Sligo could get promoted. I'm going to say this now. They do have a very, very good chance because, for me, like, Tony McEntee, what is it, year four now for him in charge? Um... You've obviously got a bulk of under-20 lads who could, co- who could come in. You combine that with a bulk of experienced players and Sean Carabine, Patrick O'Connor, Noel Murphy. Could Luke Marin come in from the under-20s? But ultimately, like I'm not going to contradict myself here, so I'm going to stay consistent with what I said with Offaly. I do think it will be just a year too soon before we see Sligo kick on and get out of Division 3. I think they definitely have the potential, um, and it's going to be very interesting to see how these players cope at a much higher level than Division 4. I mean, a slightly higher level, not a huge higher level, but I think Sligo will be a difficult team to beat, and I think Tony McEntee will have them really well organised, really well set up, and I think it'll be a torn in the side of a lot of teams in this division, so I've gone for them in third with seven points. I have both second and first finishing on 11 points. That's both Westmead and Down. Westmead, I think, will have a very topsy-turvy season as they have in the last couple of years and I do think this is the year where they do get promoted it's a weird one with Westmead because they're they're clearly good enough to play division two football absolutely no doubt about it I don't know if it's imposter syndrome or something like that like they seem to really struggle in division three against lower quality opposition but then when they play higher quality opposition they seem to raise their game like we looked at them in the all Ireland series last year very unlucky not to beat Armagh drew a Tyrone and put up a fairly good um, you know, game against Galway as well. Looking at their fixture list, they've paced awfully on the opening day. I actually think they'll lose that, but they'll then go on a three-game, four-game winning streak against Clare, Wicklow, Limerick and Antrim. They'll draw with Down and then they'll beat Sligo. So, um, like Westmead, I think they have started the National Football League in the last couple of years a little bit slowly. Um, they lost to Cavan on the opening day last year. The season previous, they lost to Leash on the opening day. So, yeah, I fancy, I, I do fancy Offaly to beat them in that opening game. But I still think Westmead have more than enough quality to get promoted. Like, sure, surely they're going to get promoted. Surely, like, with the players that they have. Like, ultimately, I think for Desi Dolan, like, 
to be taken seriously as Westmead manager, he needs to get this side promoted because, look, they had the caveat of being in the all Ireland series last year. That's not a guarantee this time around. So Westmead, for me, needs to get up to Division 2 and uh, I think they will do it in fairness. And in first, I've gone for Down. It's a massive year for, for Conor Laverty and Down. Second year, of course. A bit like Sligo and Offaly, they've, they've certainly going to have a bulk of under-20 players coming into their side as well as... Uh, a whole host of experienced lads in there but looking at their fixture list first of all Wicklow away I think will be a win Limerick at home I think will be a win as I said I'm going to predict them for a shock defeat to Antrim but I think they'll be Offaly and Sligo before a draw at Westmead and then a win versus Clare obviously I'm predicting them to draw at Westmead and down in Westmead will finish on the same amount of points so I'm going to predict that down are more likely to uh, beat a team by more but then again now that I think about it Westmead do you know what we'll go with Westmead first down second but I think down will win the title I think they'll win the division three title it's going to be interesting to see what team plays in the league for down like will you have to kill Q lads in there the likes of Michal Rooney Noel Kane, Ryan Johnson Eugene Brannigan they obviously have a wealth of underage players to come through I mean Oren Murdoch really established himself in midfield last year Pat Haverin's a very very good player he was down's top scorer last season you've Oshin Savage who could come in from the under 20s so yeah I think down are trending in a very very good direction and I think they're going to be a they're definitely going to be a dark horse this year in my opinion in terms of like the Talchin Cup if they end up in there if they go into the all Ireland series I think they'll be a tricky team um and yeah I think down like keep an eye on down I think they're going to do good things this year so if we throw the division three table up on the screen um we've got Antrim at the bottom in eighth with three points Wicklow in seventh with five points Clare or Limerick in sixth with six points Clare in fifth with six points Offaly in fourth with seven points Sligo in third with seven points uh, down in second with 11 points Westmead in first with 11 points but I am predicting down to go up as champions we then move on to division 2 and look division 2 is obviously huge with the fact that sides who get relegated from division 2 could very well end up in the Talchin Cup so an 8 have gone for Fermanagh I think they'll finish with 3 points uh, looking at their fixture list they've got Mead first up away from home and uh, I think they'll draw that game um, but I think they'll lose to Kildare they'll lose to Donegal they'll beat Cork um, sorry Matthew Hurley if you're watching I think they'll lose to Armagh, they'll lose to Loud and they'll lose to Cavan. I just think ultimately Fermanagh overachieved last year in getting up from Division 3. I think it was an extraordinary achievement from Kieran Donnelly. I have Fermanagh with three points, so like I don't think they're going to be completely cut adrift or I don't think they're going to lose every game. I still think they're going to be close in a lot of these matches and there's a few fixtures I look at, like Kildare home, we could see them getting something from that. The home games are going to be huge, like Kildare home, Cork home. Armagh home might be tough but even Mead away in the opening day maybe Loud and Cavan away like it's not impossible for Fermanagh to stay up in fairness you've got Alton Kelm, Connor Love, Ryan Lyons you do have Conal and Ryan Jones who will be uh, unavailable unfortunately and Sean Quigley from what I've heard as well won't be part of the Fermanagh setup albeit he wasn't a regular starter last year but I don't think he's going to be in the panel and look ultimately having him around to come off the bench and make an impact I think would have been huge for Fermanagh so I think he will be a big loss and then in seventh position I think a lot of people might be surprised by this and, and probably won't be happy but uh, gone for Mead I think Mead will get relegated from Division 2 I think they'll finish with five points looking at their fixture list I think they'll draw the opening game against Fermanagh like I said they'll lose to Armagh they will beat Loud, they'll draw with Kildare, they will lose to Cavan, they'll lose to Cork. And the reason being, from a me perspective, like it's first of all, their fixture list is very, very tough. I just think for Mead, second year for Calm O'Rourke. The pressure is often because obviously they're guaranteed to be in the All Ireland series. Um, but they have a lot of moving parts, like they've a lot of younger players to come in, a lot of pieces of the jigsaw that need to be put together. I'm not entirely convinced by Karma Rourke in terms of tactics and everything else. I know they won the Talchin Cup last year, but I think when you look at the teams they had to beat, you know, mostly Division 3 and 4 sides, they obviously beat down in the final. Fair enough, you have to give them a lot of credit for that. And I think there is good players there, like Jack Flynn, I highly rate. Um, Matthew Costello is very good. Aaron Lynch, Cahill Hickey, Jordan Morris, we know, has been a consistent forward for the last couple of years. You've got Owen Frayne maybe to come in as well. I don't think Mead are, like... 
I don't think this will be the end of the world for Mead. Like, I don't think they're going down to Division 3 and that's them in the doldrums and that's them done for a couple of years. I think Mead have a, a wealth of players there that they can really build and put together. And I do think Mead eventually come back up to Division 2 and possibly kick on in Division 2. But I just don't see them doing that this year. And I just think the quality in this division is quite strong. And I think Mead will struggle with that, in my opinion. And look, I think... I think for me, like it's not going to be the end of the world. They, you know, as I said, they'll go into the All Ireland series. I still think Mead will have some good moments this season, but I just fancy them to ever so slightly miss out. And um, and Loud is the team that most people would predict to go down instead of Mead. And look, I completely understand that. Obviously, Mickey Hart not in charge of Loud anymore. Ger Brennan's obviously come in there, and it's going to be it's a weird one because like is Ger Brennan going to play the same type of tactics as Mickey Hart in terms of being defensive, trying to hit teams on the counter attack? You couldn't imagine it, you couldn't see it, but at the same time, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And I think for Ger Brennan, he's a smart man, he's a smart manager. I think he's going to go into Loud, and I think th- things are going to be very similarly actually to how they were last year in terms of how they play. I don't think the results will be the same. I don't think the performances will be as good. And I do think Loud will gradually over the next couple of years start to regress again. Looking at their fixtures, I think they'll lose the opening three games. Armagh, Cork and Mead. I think they will beat Loud. I think they'll lose to Donegal. But then I think they will beat Fermanagh and Kildare in the final two games. And we mentioned previously, fixtures are so important. And I think getting Kildare or Fermanagh at the end um, could just be the difference from a Loud perspective. Because Kildare for me, will have probably maybe already checked out by then. I don't think they'll be, like, I don't think they'll be too far off promotion, but I do think ultimately Loud have the potential to go there and win. They beat them last year. Sam Mulroy, Liam and Tom Jackson, Dara McConnan. Loud will just about sneak avoiding relegation. In fifth, I've gone for Kildare with seven points we just mentioned. Yeah, looking at their fixtures, I think they'll lose to Cavan, they'll beat Fermanagh, they'll beat Armagh, um, they'll draw with Mead. A loss versus Cork, a win versus Donegal, and a loss versus Loud. Kildare, we were mentioning Wexford earlier in terms of being a very unpredictable team and a team that has all the potential to get out of Division 4 but could easily you know, get, you know, know, get, finish down near the bottom of Division 4 at the same time. I think the same applies for Kildare. I think they've got a huge amount of options and players and they could really kick on this year and get out of Division 2, in my opinion. It's it's more than, than possible. Like, they've got a lot of good players. Paddy Woodgate, Alex Byrne, Daniel Flynn. You'll have Jimmy Hyland coming back in. Maybe you'll have some under-20 players to come into the side uh, as well. Obviously, won the under-20 All-Ireland last year. Kildare, look, they have a lot of potential. Absolutely no doubt about it. And the fact that I'm predicting them to beat Armagh but lose to Cavan, like that's kind of where Kildare have been at in the last couple of years. When they play a team who are of you know high quality, they'll get up for it. They'll put in a big performance. But when they play a team of lesser quality, they'll they'll lose. You know, and that's just the way it's been for Kildare the last couple of years. In fourth, I've gone for Cavan also with seven points. But ultimately, I think they'll beat Kildare, and I think that will be um, that will essentially be what has Cavan finishing ahead of Kildare. Yeah, look, this might be a surprise. Uh, some people might look at this and think Cavan, you know, first year for Raymond Gallagher coming in as manager. They've lost Garoad McKernan, who won't be available. Looking at their fixture list, I think they'll beat Kildare in the opening day. They'll lose to Donegal, they'll lose to Cork, they'll lose to Loud. I think they'll beat Mead, they'll draw with Armagh, and then they'll beat Fermanagh on the on the final day. Their fixture list, in my opinion, is, is, is very good. It's very, very good. Getting Mead and Fermanagh at home, I think, is huge. And getting Armagh towards the end of the league as well, when Armagh... Like they'll still be in a promotion battle, no doubt, but I think they'll be they'll also start turning their attention towards Ulster. So I think Fermanagh or so I think Cavan have the potential to get a result there, in my opinion. And look, Raymond Gallagher's obviously going in there as manager, but like the difference obviously with Jerry Brennan going in at Loud and Raymond Gallagher going in as manager of Cavan is Raymond Gallagher's been a part of this team for numerous years now. As we know, he was obviously the goalkeeper. He was the captain. He knows this team inside and out. Like my guessing is, he was already a leader in the dressing room, and he was already probably doing a lot of the management already. You know, he just didn't have that official tag. We've got Eamon Murray coming in as the assistant, the man who was obviously uh, tagged with winning the All Ireland with the Mead Ladies uh, in back-to-back seasons. So I think he's going to be such a huge part of this management ticket as well. And I think having of enough. I think they do have enough. Paddy Lynch, James Smith. 
Oshin Brady, all good footballers, Podrick Faulkner, Darren McVitie's obviously uh, introduction into the team last year, or reintroduction, Keen Madden's a very good player as well, so yeah, I think Cavan will have enough to stave off any relegation worries, and who knows, they might be a dark horse for promotion. And then we have the promotion battle. Three teams I haven't mentioned yet, Armagh, Donegal and Cork. The team I think are going to miss out, and again, some people mightn't be too happy about this, and I think some people might be surprised by this prediction, but I think Armagh are going to miss out, and I think they're going to finish in third with eight points. In terms of their fixtures, I think they'll beat Loud, I think they'll beat Mead, I think they'll lose to Kildare, they'll draw with Donegal, they'll beat Fermanagh, they'll draw with Cavan, and then they'll lose to Cork. I know sometimes some of these draw predictions are, you know, like draws rarely happen in Gaelic football at the best of times, but they do happen in the league a lot of the time. I do think there's massive question marks over Armagh this year, though, in my opinion. Like, I looked at them last season, they didn't really take the league that seriously. Like, they had a lot of big players out there, but they just were playing and, you know, they weren't playing at their full potential, you know, for the majority of the league. And they looked like they were waltzing through the league at the best of times and the relegation wasn't really too worrying to them. I think they know that they haven't won an Ulster in quite a long time, so they want to end that reign. And I think there's pressure on McGinney. And look, ultimately for McGinney, like, Armagh could get promoted from Division 2, have a poor year in Ulster and a poor year in the All-Ireland. Nobody's really going to care about the Division 2 promotion. Do you know what I mean? Like, Armagh at this stage want to be challenging for an All-Ireland and winning an Ulster title. Like, that's the ultimate aim for this Armagh side. Yeah, like, they, they've obviously got... We know some of the talent they have in Conor Turbot, Rian O'Neill, Rory Grugan's very good. You've got Jarley O'Burns, who's going to be staying on uh, after after all that. Keem McConville has been really knocking on the door in terms of coming into this team in the last couple of years. Ushin O'Neill's going to be a huge uh, reintroduction back into the team he's been missing in the last two seasons. Look, I think Armagh will be in third, so I still think they're going to be, you know, there thereabouts in terms of promotion. But I just have a sneaky feeling towards the end of the league, they'll take their eye off the ball with the focus on the Ulster Championship. And I think that Cork away game is so huge. I fancy Cork to get promoted, I do. I think Armagh, I still think they could maybe go on and win Ulster, but I think they're going to miss out on promotion. And in second, I've got Cork with 10 points, as we were saying right there. In terms of their fixture list, Donegal away, I think it's going to be a defeat. Loud and Cavan, they will win. They'll lose to Fermanagh. They will beat Kildare. They'll beat Mead and they'll beat Armagh. One thing you're probably looking at, at that on that fixture list is why on earth am I predicting them to lose to Fermanagh? I just think we've seen this with Cork so many times down the years. They will go away to a team they're expecting to win quite comfortably and then get beat. I do think John Cleary has earned out those inconsistencies ever so slightly. It's a big, big year for, for John Cleary. Um, Brian Hurley in phenomenal form, obviously, for Castlehaven this year. Michael Hurley, could he come back into the fold? Obviously, it might be a couple uh, of games before those lads come back in obviously with club commitments and everything else, but like Cork have got a, a really good depth in their squad because they've had you know a bit of underage success in the last couple of years, um, or you know going back three, four years ago. Got the likes of Cahill O'Mahony, Mark Cronin, Rory Maguire have all come in from those teams. Mark Cronin looked very good throughout pre-season. Chris Oak-Jones, I think, has, has come on very strong for Cork as well. And as well as that, I think it's going to be a big year for Stephen Sherlock because I think he was inconsistent. He didn't have he didn't play the same heights as he did in 2022. And I think he's going to kick on even more and have a, a big, big year for Cork this year. And then in first, I've got Dunny Gall. So in terms of Dunny Gall's fixtures then, I think they'll beat Cork. I think they'll beat Cavan. They'll beat Fermanagh. They'll draw with Armagh, they'll beat Loud, they'll draw with Kildare. Donegal will start the league like an absolute steam train. Uh, if you look at some of their results in pre-season, they have started like an absolute house on four. Oshin Gallen looks in the form of his life. I think he scored something like 4-7 or 4-8 so far in pre-season. And look, pre-season's a weird barometer. I don't think you can take it too seriously. But one thing we know from Donegal, from looking at them in pre-season is that they're going to start very, very strong, and they're going to come out come out of the blocks really, really strong, in my opinion. You've got Michal Langan, Caelan McGonagall, Jamie Brennan's back in the fold as well, Patrick McBirthy's obviously back from injury. Yeah, Donegal are, are certainly dark horses uh, in terms of the All-Ireland, in my opinion, in terms of getting to like a semi-final or something like that. Yeah, Jim McGuinness has got a real kick out of Donegal so far in pre-season in terms of like them putting up some of the scores that they're putting up. They'll get promoted pretty comfortably. I think they'll go up as champions as well. So ultimately then, if we look at the uh, Division 2 table of what I've predicted, Fermanagh at the bottom with 3 points, Mead in 7th with 5 points, Loud in 6th with 6 points, Kildare in 5th with 7 points, Cavan 
in fourth with seven points. Armand in third with eight points. Cork in second with ten points. And Donegal in first with eleven points. Um, so that's what I've gone for in terms of Division 2. And now let's get on to the big one, Division 1. In eight, I've gone for Tyrone. Um, Tyrone have been playing with four in Division 1 for a couple of years now. And I think this is the year where they get relegated. Looking at their fixture list, I think they'll lose to Roscommon, they'll lose to Derry, they'll lose to Galway, they'll beat Mayo, they'll draw with Kerry, they'll lose to Monaghan, and then they will lose to Dublin. Fergal Logan and Brian Dewher are staying on, but they don't have Ronan McNamee, he's retired, and all Sludden is opted out. Matty Donnelly's also injured as well. You combine that with the multiple players who've opted out in the last couple of years and have made themselves unavailable. I just think there's a bit of like... I don't know, it just doesn't all seem easy at Tyrone. It's been like that for the last couple of years. Certain younger players like not coming into the team until later in the year. Like They do have the Canavans, Dara Canavan, Rory Canavan, I'm predicting both of them to have big, big years for Tyrone. Connor Cush could be a young player who comes in and, and really makes an impact. Don't think it will be com the complete end of the world with younger players you know, coming through and everything else. I think Division 2 next year might actually suit them and um, where they can build a bit of momentum build a bit of a run maybe they'll have a new manager as well so I, I do think Tyrone will get relegated but again don't think it's the end of the world and I still think Tyrone could definitely be dark horses in the all Ireland series this year or you know cause a couple of surprises I don't think Tyrone are going to have a complete miserable year and get relegated and do absolutely nothing for the rest of the year I do think they'll get relegated but you know keep an eye on them in Ulster you know, because um, one thing we know about Tyrone is that when everyone writes them off, they tend to uh, come back and bite you. So, And then we have the relegation battle, and this was a tough one. Uh, this was a tough one, because I'm going to be honest, like, looking at my Division 1 table here, it's it's going to be a little bit chaotic. I've got two points separating the team that gets relegated in seventh and the team that finishes in second. There's a case for anyone to get into a league final, and I think there's a case for anyone... To get relegated. One team I would be very confident that doesn't get relegated is Kerry. But all other six teams, I genuinely think you could make a case for any of them to get relegated. And a case for any one of them to get promoted. The team I predict to get relegated with Toronto is Mayo. Galway away, that'll be a loss. Dublin at home, that'll be a loss. They'll draw with Kerry. They'll lose to Toronto. They'll beat Ross Common and they'll beat Derry. And they'll draw with Monaghan on the final day. But ultimately, that will be what costs them. And as we, as we know with Monaghan... They have an awful habit of producing a big result on the final day of a National Football League season. And I think they will do it again. Mayo, for me, have gone very strong in the league in the last couple of years. And it's come back to bite them in the backside in the championship. Because their main focus, let's be honest, is to try to do something in the All-Ireland. Like, that's the main focus. Even winning Connacht, I don't necessarily think they, they care all that much about. Winning the All-Ireland, like, that's the one they want to focus on. So I just think Mayo, second year for Kevin McStay... You know, we know what Mayo has brought to the table for the last couple of years in terms of how they play football, the style of football, the personnel that they have. So I think they're going to mix it up a bit. I think they're going to try things different in the league. They're going to try out a lot more younger players. They're going to rotate quite a lot. And I think ultimately that will be what leads them to their relegation. In sixth, I've gone for Roscommon. I've got them with seven points. I think they'll beat Tyrone on the opening day. They'll draw with Galway. They'll lose to Dublin. They'll beat Monaghan. They'll lose to Mayo. They'll beat Kerry. Yes, that's right. I think they'll beat Kerry at home. And then they will lose to Derry on the final day. Some caveats with Russ Common that I think you could also apply to Mayo in terms of they went very strong in the league last year and they could also, they could therefore a result sort of just, you know, take their foot off the pedal a little bit. But I do think at the same time, staying in Division 1 would be of a huge importance to Davy Burke and Russ Common considering the work they put in last year and it would feel like a step backwards if they got relegated. Kieran Murth is obviously opted out. That's going to be a huge loss. Ben O'Carroll might be missing for a couple of games with the fact that Bridget's got to the All-Ireland Club football final. We'll still have German Murth. We'll still have Enda Smith. Um, bulk of younger players who've come through in, in the last few seasons. I do highly rate Davy Burke as well. So I think Russ Common will have enough to stay up. In fifth, I've gone for Monaghan. Monaghan is, uh, you know, one of those teams that I've predicted to get relegated almost every year for the last couple of seasons. Um, I think almost every National Football League predictions video I've done, I've predicted Monaghan to get relegated. And now I've predicted them to stay up and... You'll probably get relegated as a result, I'm sorry. In terms of results, Dublin away in the opening day, I think that will be a draw. I think they'll lose to Kerry. I think they'll beat Derry. I think they'll lose to Roscommon. 
They'll draw again with Galway. They'll beat Tyrone and then they'll draw again with Mayo. Three draws. Because a lot of these teams are so even, that's the reason why you do get a lot of draws and close games and everything else because you've got every team essentially playing at their own level, if that makes sense. They're obviously not going to have Rory Began. He's gone to the NFL. And Carl Gallagher, who's gone to the AFL. Uh, Connor McManus will be missing in the early parts of the league according to reports they do have some other good players as well like sean jones i think has looked good in pre-season conor mccarthy i've been impressed with obviously um last year moving into a more wingback role and i do think viddy Corey ultimately will get enough out of this monaghan side to do enough to stay in the division and look i've got them a point off of getting to a league final like a Another result here, like if they were to get a win versus Roscommon, which I haven't predicted, or if they were to get over the line against Mayo on the final day, maybe they could get to a league final. I think Monaghan, to be fair, I've got them in fifth, but again, they're that type of team that maybe could do even better, to be fair. I've also got Dublin in fourth on seven points, um, so you'll notice I've got Roscommon, Monaghan and Dublin all on seven points. Uh, that obviously rules out the head-to-head record, and it goes down to score difference, and I think Dublin are more likely to put an absolute pasting on a team than, say, Monaghan or Ross Commons. So that's why I've got Dublin and Fort. In terms of their results, I think they'll draw with Monaghan on the opening day. They'll beat Mayo. They'll beat Ross Common. They'll lose to Kerry. They'll lose to Derry. They'll lose to Galway. But then they will beat Tyrone. Um, so, yeah, look, I think Dublin, like, obviously All-Ireland champions last year. Massive year for Desi Farrell. But notoriously, under Desi Farrell, we have been very inconsistent in the league um, when you look through results and performances and everything else. I think we'll do enough to stay up. And I don't think, like, I've got us losing three games in a row, Kerry, Derry, Galway. But I think ultimately we'll still be okay and we'll still stave off relegation worries. We know the band is staying together and James McCarthy, Mick Fitzsimons, all these lads are going to be staying in the panel, Paul Mannion. Jack McCaffrey, there's going to be no major players opting out. Like, obviously, Ryan Baskell isn't going to be there, and you're not going to have Davy Byrne either, but I think you've got more than enough in the squad and in the team to substitute those losses. There's going to be rotation, and certainly in the early part of the league, Dublin are going to be vulnerable, and that's why I think Monaghan might nick a draw and, and could possibly win that game, to be fair. In terms of players to come in, I think Theo Clancy could be a big player for, for Dublin, and he could be a long-term replacement for Mick Fitzsimons. Um, obviously, Kim Walker croaks were only beaten a couple of weeks ago, so maybe it's in the latter part of the league that we see him come in. As I was saying earlier, I've seen Dublin up close against Wexford in pre-season, and one player that really stood out in midfield was Peter Duffy. Uh, absolute joint of a man. He could be possibly maybe a, a long-term replacement or a you know potential player to partner Brian Fenton over the next couple of years. So yeah, I'm going to go for Dublin to finish in fourth. And then we have the battle to see who gets into the league final. And again, with the fact that the league final is a week before a lot of provincial championships start, like I do think there'll be some teams that maybe won't even want to get into a league final. I think there'll be some cases of certain teams like... I don't know, taking their eye off the ball or just like gradually limping into a league final. So tough to be honest with you. I think Kerry will start the league like an absolute steam train. So I've got them finishing first. I think it will be between Galway and Derry. And originally I was going to go with Galway. I fancy Derry to nick it. And I think ultimately it will come down to a head-to-head record. So I think Galway, I've got them with eight points looking at their fixtures. I think they'll beat Mayo. They'll draw with Russ Common, they'll beat Tyrone, they'll lose to Derry, they'll draw with Monaghan, they'll beat Dublin, and then they will lose to Kerry on the final day, which will ultimately be what sees them miss out. It's going to be interesting to see how Galway approach the league. Um, Shane Walsh, you know, I think they really need to get him back into tip-top form, because ever since he's joined Kilmer Crokes, he hasn't been the same player for Galway. You've got younger players who've really started to step up in the last couple of years. Matthew Tierney have been very impressed with Tom O'Callaghan, Jack Lynn is a very good defender as well. One thing I would say about Galway though is they need to find an option to sort of make up for Damien Comer. Like when Damien Comer is not there and any time he's been injured or been taken off or anything like that, Galway haven't been the same team. They need to try and find someone who can do the work that Damien Comer does. Just because, look, he's not going to be there forever. Like, and he is, you could arguably say, you know, maybe retirement is not too far away for a player like Damien Comer. So I do think they need to find another option, you know, to sort of substitute Damien Comer when he's not there. And look, it's a big year for Galway. They could be dark horses. Certainly a lot of people are predicting they could cause a shock or two. But ultimately, I do think for Galway, they're going to finish in third. They're going to have a good year. 
but they're just going to miss out on the league final. So as I said before, I think Derry will be the team that finishes in the league final with eight points as well. Um, so the same amount of points as Galway, but I think it will be that win versus Galway that ultimately takes them to the final uh, on the basis of the head-to-head -head record. Looking at their fixture list, I think they'll lose the opening day against Kerry. They will beat Tyrone. They will lose to Monaghan. They will beat Galway. They will beat Dublin. They'll lose to Mayo, and then they will beat Ross Common. Uh, the loss to Mayo, considering I think Mayo will go down, might be a bit of a surprise. But I do think that um, Derry maybe just might just start shifting towards the Ulster Championship. Um, I still think they'll have enough to beat Ross Common on the final day as well. With Ross Common very much probably already being safe by that point. Obviously, Mickey Hart coming in. There is question marks like will Derry go as strong in the league as they have under Rory Gallagher previously. I don't think they actually will, to be fair. I think there'll be a bit more rotation, but I still think they'll have enough to get results and have enough to get to a league final. Their key players will play, like Shane McGuigan, Brendan Rogers. They might be they'll be missing some of the Whitey Grimes Glen lads like Connor Glass and Emma Bradley, Kieran McFell. Hence why I think they'll be a little bit slow at the start of the league with defeats to Monaghan and Kerry in their opening three games. But I think once they start getting those lads back, they'll kick on, they'll get results, and they'll do enough to get to the final. And then in first, I've gone for Kerry. I've got them finishing with 10 points, and I also think they will be the champions as well. Obviously, for people who saw my 2024 GA predictions, this won't come as that much of a surprise. But I think they'll beat Derry. I think they'll beat Monaghan. I think they'll draw with Mayo. I think they'll beat Dublin. They'll draw with Toronto. They'll lose to Roscommon, and then they will beat go away uh, i think kerry will go strong in the league especially at the early part of the league hence why i think they'll win three of their opening five games um, and they'll pick up two draws in that process as well i think david clifford will come back in um sean o'shea's been playing in pre-season kerry haven't had as many club commitments as previous years so i think they will go stronger in the league and i do think as well kerry will have a point to prove look i think they'll be hurting over that all on a final loss i think when they play Dublin and Crow Park, for example, they'll be absolutely chomping up a bit and I could see them winning that game. And I could see Kerry really turning it on and really producing big results, big performances and ultimately get themselves to a league final. And I think we have saw Kerry do this a couple of years ago, obviously, as well, when they got to the league final in the same year that they won the All-Ireland. And let's not forget, like, Kerry, like, the Munster Championship to them is nearly like a pre-season competition. They don't need to be at their best. Fair enough, they may be against Cork, they need to raise their game. But generally speaking against everyone else, like they can rest their team, they can rotate, they don't need to be anywhere near their best. So in terms of players who could come in, we could see Dylan Ganey come in, Stefan O'Cumber could be a big player for Kerry in midfield as well. But um, yeah, I'm going to go for Kerry to finish on 10 points and I think they're going to win the league as well. We'll throw the league table up on the screen then. I think Toronto will finish bottom with three points, Mayo in seventh with six points, Roscommon in sixth with seven points, Monaghan in fifth with seven points, Dublin in fourth with seven points, Galway in third with eight points, Derry in second with eight points, Kerry in first with ten points. So, like when you look at that league table, there, for example, a win for Monaghan versus Mayo on the final day could take them third, possibly even into a league final. So, like it really, really is going to go down to the war. And I think in Division One, there's going to be so little between a lot of these teams. There really, really is. Anyways, we're going to wrap this up here. I've been waffling for about an hour now, um, so this video has probably gone on a little bit longer than I'd anticipated. But let me know who you think will be promoted, relegated. Let me know what predictions you agree, disagree with, obviously there's going to be predictions here I get wrong, absolutely no shadow of a doubt about it, and I'm sure when we do a reactions video to, this, to these predictions, we'll be looking back and thinking, how on earth did I predict this or that or whatever, so yeah, let me know your predictions in the comments down below, hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already, stay tuned for more videos coming soon, hurling league predictions and more season previews and everything else, so stay tuned for that. And obviously there'll be a preview for week one of the National Football League next week as well. Preview preview shows and review shows will be coming back consistently now as well. So yeah, my name's Aaron. Speak to you all later.